Strong acid, strong base titration calculations are going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll leave a link in the description for you can find those courses. Now, this lesson is part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout the school year, so if you'd like to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. So pH calculations for strong acid, strong base titrations. We'll cover in this lesson. In the next one, we'll go through pH calculations for weak acid, strong base, or weak base, strong acid titrations, which will be even a little bit step uh, harder than these. So, But hopefully, you're going to get the process down. So a lot of times, uh, we give you a very rote memorization of a process for how you do a pH calculation, rather than giving you a method of understanding why you're given that process. And my goal is to give you the full understanding of the process so that by understanding it, you're more easily going to remember it. So the idea is this. Uh, we're going to start off with a strong acid, HCl, 150 milliliters. It. We're going to add progressively more and more sodium hydroxide. We'll start with the initial point before we ever add any sodium hydroxide, and we'll then do one point before the equivalence point, right at the equivalence point, and then one point beyond the equivalence point, so that you've got an example of every point along the titration curve that could possibly ask you the pH. Now, up until the equivalence point, the pH is going to be less than 7. It's going to be acidic. And you're simply just going to be doing your calculations just using the definition of pH. pH equals negative log of the H plus concentration. So everywhere up until the equivalence point, you're going to have excess acid excuse me, in your solution. And so we'll just use the definition of pH to get there. Now, right at the equivalence point, this inflection point on the curve as we learned in the last lesson. So right there, the pH will be 7 in a strong acid, strong base titration. That won't be true in the weak acid, strong base, or weak base, strong acid titrations, but it is true for our strong acid, strong base titration. And then finally, everywhere beyond the equivalence point, it's going to be a basic solution. There's going to be excess hydroxide in the solution. And so we're going to be calculating the pOH first by just taking the negative log of that hydroxide concentration and then subtracting from 14. And so now we've got a kind of an idea. There's really only three types of calculations associated with this. Before the equivalence point, at the equivalence point, and after the equivalence point. That's kind of the idea. And what we'll ultimately do is we're just going to treat this as a limiting reagent calculation. When you've got an acid and a base reacting with each other, as long as at least one of them is strong, and in this case they're both strong, strong acid, strong base, that reaction is going to go to completion, and reactions that go to completion are just simply limiting reagent problems, and we're going to treat them as such as we'll see. So, But first point we're going to do here is just when we've added no sodium hydroxide. And so in this case, all we've got is 0.1 molar HCl to start with. And if I want to get the pH uh, of 0.1 molar HCl, then I just take the negative log of 0.1. So in this case, we're just going to know that the H plus concentration is simply 0 0.1 molar. So if the HCl dissociates completely, and so we'll just take the negative log of that. And so for that initial point, the pH is just going to be 1. And so that's your initial point on your curve. And so what you're going to find out here is that so your initial point on your curve for a strong acid, strong base titration can really start out anywhere here uh, up until pH 7. It really is going to depend on what concentration of your acid you have. And the greater that concentration is going to be, the lower than your pH curve is going to start, assuming you're starting with your acid as your analyte. If you're starting with your base as your analyte, well, then your pH could start out as high as it could going the other way around. So, But we're going to just treat it this way. So our acid is our analyte, and the sodium hydroxide is going to be the titrant. Now, it's going to work the same way. On the other end of the curve, you're going to asymptotically approach so the pH of what just the basic solution would be. So in this case, uh, with 0.125 molar NaOH, you're never actually going to reach a point where your hydroxide is ever this high because you're going to be having a lot of it neutralized by HCl. But let's just say we just kept on adding NaOH, you know, till we've got gallons and gallons of it. Well, at some point, you've probably added so much of it that the hydroxide concentration for all practical purposes is going to be close to 0.125. All right, so that is the first data point, pH 1, not so bad. So let's move on to the next one on our list. All right, so that first initial point really isn't part of the titration. It's just telling us that, you know, right at the beginning here, before we've actually started the, the titration, all you got is a strong acid. We already figured out how to calculate the pH of a strong acid in the last chapter. But now we're going to start the, the titration proper. We're going to jump straight up to 100 milliliters. But technically, this could have been anything. We'll find out. 
Uh, I picked this point on purpose just because it's before the equivalence point. And so again, with a strong acid and a strong base reacting with each other, this reaction is going to go to completion. It's a limiting reagent problem. So, and for a limiting reagent problem, you don't need to know the concentrations, you need to know the number of moles. So for reactions that reach equilibrium, you need molarities, concentrations, because equilibrium constants are concentrations of products over concentrations of reactants. But for reactions that go to completion, it's all about how many moles you have to see who's the limiting reagent and stuff like this. So, so that's where we're going to go. And you might recall that molarity is equal to the moles over the volume in liters. If we rearrange this to solve for moles, it's going to be molarity times the volume in liters. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to multiply molarity times liters. And so in this case, we've got molarity is 0 0.1 molar. So, and in this case, I'll convert this to 0 0.15 liters. So in this case, you can probably do this in your head. 0.15 times 0.1 is 0 0.015. moles. Now a lot of uh, professors and, and teachers will in, teach this a little bit different and, and to keep the numbers kind of bigger and things of this sort, instead of using liters here, they'll use milliliters. So we'd still use the 150 milliliters here. And when you multiplied 0.1 times 150 milliliters, you would have got 15, but not 15 moles. You would have got what they'd call millimoles. So, and just like, you know, one mole reacts with one mole, in this case, one to one ratio, well, one millimole reacts with one millimole. So, and they do that just to deal with numbers that are nicer than 0 0.015, because, you know, for all practical purposes, 15 is a little easier to deal with. So, however, I just like doing this in moles. A lot of students never get introduced to millimoles, and I don't want to confuse them here, but everybody uses moles, and that's what we're going to do here. And so, we just figured out that we've got 0 0.015 moles of HCl. Now, same thing with the NaOH. In this case, it's 0 0.125 molar. And we've got 100 milliliters, that's 0 0.1 liters. And multiply those together, and again, you can probably do this in your head, and you're going to get 0 0.0125 moles of NaOH. Cool. And in this case, we can see that we've got more HCl than we do NaOH. And so the NaOH is going to be the limiting reagent, and we're going to lose all of it. And since these react in a one-to-one -one ratio, you're also going to lose the same number of moles, 0 0.0125, for the HCl as well. And so in this case, you're not going to have any NaOH left in your solution. So however, if you subtract this out and pull out your calculator, Gonna make good use of it in this lesson. So 0 0.015 minus 0 0.0125 is gonna get you 0 0.0025. Now technically we're also gonna form 0 0.0125 moles of water and NaCl. We're just not going to care. It's an aqueous solution. So it's already got a ton of water in there. So adding just a teeny bit more, no big deal. So, but the NaCl we're not going to care about because NaCl is a neutral salt. We learned that group one metal cations and group two metal cations are negligible cations. So they're not acidic. And then we learned that the anions that are the conjugate base of the strong acids are negligible as well. And they're not Lewis bases. And so as a result, NaCl is a neutral salt and it's not going to affect the pH of a solution at all. And we'll just ignore it then. We'll find out that when we do a weak acid strong base or weak base strong acid, so titrations, that the salt you create will not be negligible and you will have to account for it because it is either going to be acidic or basic. But not the case here for a strong acid strong base titration. And so in this case, we look at our solution and say, well, what's in our solution now that the dust settles, now that our limiting re reagent reaction is run to completion, what's left that's going to affect the pH? Well, only one thing, HCl. And how do you find the pH uh, of an HCl solution? Well, you just take the negative log of the H plus concentration. That's it. That's all you do. So, but that means you need the H plus concentration. And so right now we have a number of moles. That is not the same thing as a concentration. So here H plus is going to equal the number of moles over the number of liters. And so we have this many moles, 0.025, but the question is how many liters do we have? Well, we've mixed two solutions here. We've mixed 150 milliliters of HCl and 100 milliliters of NaOH, now having a total volume of 250 milliliters, and 250 milliliters is 0 0.25 liters. So, and again, you might be able to do this in your head. You probably can, 0 0.0025 divided by 0 0.25, but good place to make use of your calculator 
broadly here and often, so 0.01 molar. And so your pH is just gonna equal the negative log of 0 0.01, and you're gonna get a pH of now two. Cool, so we're somewhere up this curve now at a pH of two. So we're still before the equivalence point, so but somewhere up that curve, and the pH has just gone up one pH unit. Cool, so in this case, uh, you might have realized once you calculated the moles that, yep, the NaOH was going to be the limiting reagent, and the pH is still going to be there for acidic. The NaOH is going to run out. There's excess acid. Okay, so the pH was less than 7. Before we ever did a calculation, you probably would have realized you're on that side of the equivalence point. So let's move on to the next one here. All right, so the second point we're going to do a calculation for is for 120 milliliters of NaOH. And notice the initial number of moles of HCl is not changing. It's still going to be 0.015, and so I've still got that plugged in right here. But the number of moles of NaOH is now going to be different. So we're going to take our 0.125 molar times 120 milliliters is 0.12 liters. And it turns out this is also going to equal 0.015 moles. At this point, you should realize, oh, look, the two numbers are equal. The number of moles of HCl and the number of moles of NaOH are equal. We're at the equivalence point in the titration. So but if you hadn't figured that out, you keep going, you'll realize, oh, they're both the limiting reagent. And so you're going to have 0.015 moles of both lost. And you're going to find out that there's nothing left in your solution that's going to affect the pH. And again, yep, you're going to form some NaCl and don't care. It's a neutral salt. It doesn't affect the pH. And because there's nothing left in your solution that's going to affect the pH, that is why the pH is going to be 7 at that equivalence point here. So pH is 7. There's no like calculation for you to figure it out. You just get to the end of your limiting reagent uh, uh, reaction here and just find out that there's nothing in your solution to affect the pH. So the pH is going to be neutral and it is still Seven. Let's move on to the next point beyond the equivalence point. All right, so the last data point we're going to look at here is calculating the pH from we've added 150 milliliters of NaOH. And you might be like, well, there's the same volume, Chad. Yep, but the molarity of the NaOH was higher than the molarity of the HCl. So we're definitely going to, having the same volume but a higher molarity, it's definitely going to have more moles, and we're going to be on the basic side of that equivalence point, as we should already expect here from the previous two calculations anyways. Uh, and so in this case, we've still got 0.125 molar NaOH, but now we've got 150 milliliters, that's 0 0.15 liters. So if we put that into our calculator, so 0.125 times 0.15 is 0 All right, so now we can see that we've actually got less moles of HCl than NaOH, and so now HCl is going to be the limiting reagent, and it's going to run out completely. So no HCl left, but again, HCl and NaOH react in a one-to-one -one ratio, so you're also going to lose 0.015 moles of the NaOH. And so if we take that 0 0.01875 uh, and subtract off 0 0.015, we're going to get 0 0.00375. moles of hydroxide or sodium hydroxide left in our solution. And so with excess hydroxide, excess strong base, well, we know how to find the pOH of a strong base. You just take the negative log of your hydroxide concentration. But it is a hydroxide concentration. Well, concentration, molarity, is not the same thing as moles. We've got to turn that into a molarity. And so our hydroxide concentration is the moles over the liter, so 0 0.00375 moles all over, and in this case, we've got a total of 150 plus 150, 300 milliliters, which is 0 0.3 liters. So we'll take our last answer in my calculator here, divided by 0.3, and get 0 0.0125. That is molarity, and we'll take the negative log of that to get the pOH. So negative of the log of my last answer gets me 1.9, or at least 1.903333. So but I'll round it to 1.9. And so we'll subtract from 14 and find out that the pH is 12.1.
cool. And so now all of a sudden we're somewhere up here on the curve beyond that equivalence point. And that's it. So you've got the initial point, which is just a strong acid all by itself. We learned how to do that in the last chapter. So then you've got before the equivalence point, and you've just got excess strong acid. And you just have to remember to take the number of excess moles and divide it by the total volume in liters to get the molarity of excess acid, and then take the negative log to get your pH. At the equivalence point, there was nothing left in your solution when the dust settled to affect your pH. The pH was simply seven. And then finally, beyond the equivalence point, you just had to take the number of moles of excess base and divide it by the total volume in liters to get your hydroxide concentration, and then take the negative log to get the pOH, and then finally subtract from 14 to get your pH. And so for a strong acid, strong base titration, these are the only options you're ever going to see. So three different sorts of calculations, either before the equivalence point, after the equivalence point, and then really at the equivalence point, there wasn't really a calculation there. Again, pH is seven, because there's nothing left in your solution to affect pH. But we'll find out in the next lesson that for weak acid strong base or weak base strong acid, it's going to get a little more complicated. We'll have a couple more options beyond just what we've got here. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, thumbs up button, pretty much the best thing you can do to support the channel. If you're looking for practice for titration calculations, check out my general chemistry master course. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. A free trial is available. Happy studying.